In this video we're going to take a look at what you can do if you get a snapped key in a Euro cylinder. These kind of locks are very common. I do have to point out that I've actually just put this in here just to demonstrate. This lock is not actually the correct lock for this door and it is actually sticking out considerably on the other side. So a few days ago a friend of mine had an accident and the child snapped off the key in the lock. Apparently the key was damaged before. So if you do have a key and it is slightly damaged, just remember that these are only made from brass and they are very soft and can be broken very easily. We were actually very lucky in this instance. The key is actually broken in there but we can still put that part of the key in there and we can still turn the Euro cylinder. So that made fixing the lock extremely easy. If you can't actually turn the key you've got a major problem because you need to get that part out before you can fit a new part and you can't actually get that part out unless you can turn the key. With a lot of locks you can actually put another key in the other side and turn it because that won't work because part of the key is still in this side. The first step is to ensure that you can actually turn the door to lock and unlock it. If that is the case it is very easy you can simply remove the Euro cylinder and then go and get a replacement cylinder. So assuming you can operate the lock still, it's very easy to do. We simply need to remove this screw in the centre and this actually holds in the Euro cylinder. So we can simply take out that screw. And then we can insert the broken part of the key and we can carefully push that back out. You do need to turn the key in order to get the Euro cylinder out, which is why you need to be able to turn it. Like so. So once you've got that removed, all you need to do is take that to your local locksmith or your shop that stocks these and get a direct replacement. It is a good idea to get the high security one when you are replacing one of these. You do not want to get one that can be snapped easily because that is a real weakness in a door like this. So that is the actual lock for this door and as you can see it is anti-snap on the inside and the outside. So I'm now going to fit this lock back in. So assuming you can get your old Euro cylinder out, you can simply do that. You can do a direct replacement like so. So that is step one. If you can turn the key, you can just buy a replacement lock, swap it over and that's it. The job is done, nice and simple. We're now going to look at another couple of scenarios just in case you can't actually turn the key in your door. If you can't turn the key at all what you could try doing is removing the door handles and then you could use a technique which is known as lock snapping. That involves getting a pair of mole grips on the Euro cylinder, get them on there nice and tight, snap down on the Euro cylinder and that will snap off part of the Euro cylinder enabling you to use an Allen key and a pair of pliers to unlock the door. You do have to be very careful when you're doing this. If you have a Euro cylinder which is anti-snap, you're simply going to snap off your Euro cylinder and you'll still be in a bad position because you will not be able to unlock or lock the door. If you can't actually turn the key to unlock the door and you decide to try snapping it, it will actually snap there where that screw is. Once you've done that, the cam will actually fall out. So then you need to turn the cam in the door to be able to unlock it. So to be able to do that, you're going to need something like that, which is a hex key and a pair of mole grips. You should be able to put that in the hole and actually turn that to unlock the door. And by using the leverage of the mole grips, you should quite easily be able to turn that round and that will do the work of the cam. As you can see from this lock when you turn it the cam turns around and that is the part that actually locks and unlocks the door. So if you are brave enough to try snapping off the lock that is of course providing you don't have an anti-snap cylinder you can then 
use the hex key and the pair of more grips to turn that round to get the leverage to unlock the door. It is very risky doing that, especially if you are unsure whether or not you have a anti-snap cylinder. There is a chance that if you do snap off the cylinder, you won't be able to get in there anyway to undo it using a hex key. You can of course try pushing the broken part of the key out. You can do that by using the existing key. That will work in some instances. You may just be able to push the key forwards enough so that you can grab it with some pliers. If not, you can use something like that, which is a very small hex key. That is approximately like a one millimeter hex key. And that will actually fit in the other side of the Euro cylinder like so. You can then use that and you can push. And if you push it hard enough, enough times, you may just be able to get the key to move forwards a bit. see that that is just about sticking out of there now. So there is a chance that you could pull that with a pair of pliers and remove the broken piece. If you can do that, you can actually reuse the Euro cylinder. There is no need to buy a new one. You only need to buy a new one if you can't actually remove the broken part of the key. I have seen a couple of videos on YouTube where they've actually pushed something down this side of the lock and successfully been able to pull the key out. I've not been able to do that on any lock, probably because the key is such a good fit in the lock in the first place. I do have a set of lock picking tools and there's absolutely no chance at all that you can get any of them past the key. So I've been waggling that now for a couple of minutes and we do have a little portion of the old broken key that's sticking out. So there is a chance that we can actually grip that with some pliers and pull that out. like so. So we've managed to get that part out. There is a chance that you can take that to a locksmith and get them to cut you another key. If not, and you have a spur key, you can always get one cut from the spur key, which is a much better option. So I'm now gonna push that back in there and we're gonna have a go at using another technique to get that out. So as you can see, that's pushed all the way in so that we can turn and unlock the lock. So we just need to apply a small amount onto there. If you find that you can't actually secure your door and you need to go to bed until the next day, or you need to go to the shop and buy a new lock, most people have at least two doors into the property, the front and the back. You can actually secure one of the doors using a piece of wood like this. So all you need is a piece of wood that will go from the floor to the ceiling. Sometimes you may have to join two pieces together. All we need to do with that is mark where the handle is. You can then fix a piece of metal on there, a piece of wood. You can use anything you've got lying around. I'm just gonna use this bracket. And all I'm gonna do is put that on there. And then I'm just gonna screw that into position using those two screw holes. I'm not even gonna bother cutting that to length. You can then just take that and slide that over the door handle. And that will prevent anybody from being able to operate the handle, therefore opening the door. I hope you've enjoyed watching this video. If you have and you haven't done so already, please subscribe to the channel.